Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the October 2016 tw 2v2 tournament. I remain your host, Shadow Fury333, and now joined by. Parzival. <laughs> and we're going to be finishing out this tournament with the elimination round, since apparently the Swiss round was purely a seeding round for the elimination round because there weren't a whole lot of teams. Normally it's used for elimination, but in this case it was purely for. Oops. It was purely for the for this seeding. That's it. That, that was everything. So first off, we're going to have Black Duchy and Sigero versus Google Frog and Orphilius. That's the first game. It'll be on Ravaged, which is one of my favorite maps. If not my favorite map, I think it's my favorite map. Yeah, I don't know what... and this map actually has seen a lot of play recently. Oh? So I'm a little anxious to see what um, Black Dutch Isagero and Google Frog and Orpheus managed to do with it. Yeah, I think they're probably going to end up going for something... Hmm, I mean, this is... we're no longer dealing with best of one. But... I'm sure that one of the teams is going to set up a gunship setup of some kind. I mean, it's no longer best of one, but being that it's best of three, that first game, you can just do something. I mean, why not go for a warrior drop or something like that? Especially when you have a relatively defensible opening position. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, we're still waiting for something. Okay, there we go. Waiting for Google Frog. Google Frog is back. We can start as soon as possible. There we go. And I'm going to check my settings for why I can hear myself and mumble. Oh. Okay. Anyway. We still want that. So yeah, this is a bit of an awkward situation, but I think it'll work out okay. I mean, at this point, Google Frog and Sigero kind of got the bottom spot when it came to the previous part, the Swiss bracket. But like I said, that was entirely about seeding. At least in theory, it was about seeding, but it actually didn't work out that way. It's rather bizarre. So yeah, that was... So we've essentially had two tournaments. We had the Swiss tournament, which was a tie between the... Well, the top two teams we had. Which were Anarchid, Hokomoko, and 400, and... Like, guess what? Really, Anarchid and Hokomoko kind of took the top... I think 400 and... Yeah, 400... No, Black Dutch and Zagero. Those were... That was the other one that took essentially the top. So, Black Dutch and Sigero okay. coming in here as the strongest team between the two, at least in terms of wins for this tournament. Yeah, and, and like... Sigero was actually pretty good in the last tournament. Yeah, so I imagine that this will probably work out... I mean, like, yeah, this is why I was looking forward to them, too. I was really, I was really keen to see how they were going to play, how this is going to work out. Because Sigero is... It's kind of surprising. It was a bit of a wild card. And so far, they've yeah. been surprising. I mean, not necessarily doing the best, but doing stuff. Anyway, at this point, Orphelius... Okay, so Google, Orphelius going for the Air Factory. Google Frog going for Shieldbot. Sigero going for Cloaky. And Black Duchy going for Gunship. And it looks like we're going to see a nice blasting rush from Black Duchy while Swifts come out from Orphelius. And the other two players go for more typical openers. Glaives, dirtbags, opening constructors. Nothing too atypical. Yeah. It's kind of surprising. Dirtbags are going to be pretty good for scouting on here since they're only, what, 30? Yeah. And they could jump. Yep. So you can easily go up those hills and deal with this. Overall, surprisingly, no cheese off the very first round of this match. I mean, 
Like I said, it is best of three, so, or best, yeah, best of three, so we could easily see cheese coming in. But apparently that is not what's going to happen. We may see that depending on what happens after this match, because it is, I believe, going to be loser picks. That is generally how things are done. And Blastman coming in here with that first little bit of damage. Nice little bit of damage there. Tiny bit of economic damage. Southwest team still doing just fine for economy though. Actually with a slight advantage, thanks to Goofrog having built up over to the south here. While the northeast side, Black Duchy and Seguero both very focused on their base. Seguero going out a little bit, but overall not doing too much differently. And Goofrog going for a nice little Sky Lotus, just to hold the fort. And at the same time, Zagato mm. coming in with a strong force. Very strong force. This is possibly enough of a threat for Goofrog's commander. The Goofrog's commander already yeah. under enough fire to go down. Very, there we go. Goofrog's commander. Two minutes in, already one commander down. Southwest short their forward commander too on top of that. Nice harassment by Zagato. This is what I mean by wild card. Segaro just does things. And sometimes it works. And that was one of those times. So I don't really expect... I don't know. I mean, Southwest, this is going to be tough for them. Like Going in, one commander short when they had 20 metal per second. That's a fifth of their metal. And the forward commander's out. Yeah, Black and that was getting Google Frog's real expansion power there. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. Being a forward commander, it's that is the most important thing. If you can get rid of that, then you just don't have you slow down the expansions. And at this point, Northeast team kind of taking advantage of that, focusing a bit more on getting their military up as how they take advantage of that. But still, that's a thing to do. At this point, though, Trident's coming in to basically protect the rapiers. That's their only point, and they did a good job with that. So hey. It's a good point. Unfortunately for the south, the northeast team, the southwest team, focusing entirely on ground-based anti-air, other than the two swifts. So really not a whole lot that can be done with that. Siguero, however, with those sides that are about to come down, that should be there. That should be able to deal with some stuff. And for those of you who are a bit disappointed about cheese, well, we do have size three minutes into the game, and we did have the glaive assault on the commander right off the bat. Not exactly cheese, but close. It's like Velveeta. It's the Velveeta of early rush strategies. Or maybe Cheese Whiz. It, and Orphelius is no, a bit behind because he wasn't building anything for like a few minutes. So no Swifts at all. Mm hmm. Yeah, we do see the production has resumed on that, but otherwise it is pretty much. Pretty much entirely Northeast's game to lose. Very good early advantage coming out there. I mean, of course, bear in mind that loser picks means that, assuming I'm right, that Black Duchy and Zagero won't be able to pick the next map. But, oh, oh, that is not where I would use a scythe. That Lotus was not the best position for the scythe. That left it totally open. Ophelius' commander, under a lot of fire, though, could still go down if both commanders go down. Yes, it will. That already... Yep. Five minutes into the game, not even five minutes into the game, both commanders for the Southwest team are dead. Done. I mean, at this point, Northeast team with a 15 metal per second advantage, with a lot of the map under their control, and with an army that's basically at this point been able to just do whatever it likes, and they've gotten rid of both commanders. I mean, what build power is even there? There's an engineer for Goo Frog. There's a convict for Google Frog over in the southeast. There's another convict being built right now. There's one crane that's being built right now. There's hardly any build power for the southwest team. This yeah, is and a... the cranes can be really easily shut down by their air, so... Yeah, so that's the thing. On top of that, you just have... You've got basically no way of getting back in here. Actually, they can be shot down by glaives. Cranes are very low-flying units, so there's not much that's going to have a hard time dealing with them. In fact, I think glaives are now on the base. Hmm? Yeah, there it is right there. That one hero glaive. I mean, granted, there have probably been so many hero glaives as it is. 
All the glaives have been heroes. Especially the ones that died. Which I believe is all of them. Yep. I don't think there's actually any... Oh, there are still glaives in the map. Well, more glaives to become heroes. I mean, the early ones had to save some heroing from the later ones, because at this point, the later ones might not become heroes. They might just kind of walk over, and then by the time they get there, the match is over. Yeah. The rate it's going, sheesh. So Northeast team with a 20 metal per second advantage already taking... No second factory, interestingly enough. In fact, kind of running out of production time, but doesn't matter. Google Frog throwing in the towel. Orphelius following suit shortly after, and that was game one. Already very quickly going over to the Northeast team. It's a nice job, Black Dutch and Seguero. Quickly taking that match. That was very decisive. Like, it was all about early rush. So, those of you whining about a lack of cheese, like me, so listen to me, me. There was cheese. I was five minutes in. Both commanders dead. The funny thing is... Alexis and Star... You might um, want to use a lower gate threshold. Half of that cut out, just so you know. Um, hear me now? Yes. But, uh, what I was saying, in the Metal Excess statistics bar, Sigaro actually ended up, like, accessing 236 metal, and Google Frog and Orphelius had none somehow. Even though Orphelius didn't build anything for, like, Team three shared minutes. Metal. Team shared metal yeah. is a big deal. And yeah, there was a point where the Southeast team was the only, or the Northeast team they only had 20 metal per second production, even though they had like a 30, 40 metal per second income. So it actually made okay. a pretty big difference. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look like much, but it was. Anyhow. Not sure what map they're going to go for next, though. That was just weird. And some... <laughs> Firepluck suggesting that they should have gone for ships. And just gone around the back. I mean, that could work, actually. It does work on Ravage. Yeah. Well, that is some cheese. Hey, what we saw, like I said, it, was, it wasn't really cheese. It was just fake cheese. But this was... That would be real cheese. Some real good cheese. I'll see myself out. Anyhow, match two. What what map are we on? Orphelius and Google Frog still taking a little bit of time to decide, apparently. Or at least that seems to be the case. I mean, that's what they're supposed to be doing, because that is how it works, but I don't know if they are actually going to be doing that right now, because they they don't seem to be. I see no sign that they're going to do that. I mean, it should be able to. Yeah. I'm trying to think if it wasn't in the rules. What the? Oh, never mind. Best of three. Yes. Loser chooses map. There is a pretty small pool for doing so, but they do choose map. And they're apparently choosing Avalanche. Okay. Okay. So, Google Frog and Orphelius want to out-cheese the cheese. I mean, Avalanche is a bit of a tricky map because you do need that southwest, and it's often hard to know that. But still, it's... Hey, at this point, it is really a question of how are we going to get enough, or at least for them, like, for the... For Google Frog and Orphelius, they need to be able to just out cheese that. Because the thing is, they lost they lost two very good early raids. And Avalanche is a map where very good early raids are still very powerful. So I'm not quite sure I understand the logic of going for this map as opposed to, say, given the maps available. I would have said Desert Needle if it was available, but it's not. The only one that would be available I think would work decently would be either Archer's Valley or Cold Snap. Yeah. 
everything else is still kind of small. But those two would probably work okay for setting up a good late game economic build that would allow Google Frog and Orphalias to just take the advantage. On the other hand, they did win on Baron. So, kind of goes either way there. And on this map, or er, Avalanche, the bottom is going to be a lot more important than controlling the top. Because it's, what, 10 plus more metal than the top? Mm-hmm. Pretty sure both players, or both teams are aware of that, though. I mean, I have yeah. seen matches that didn't, where it actually was meaningful. So we'll see. I'm much more confident Orphelius and Google Frog are aware of that fact than Seagatter on Black Duchy. Black Duchy actually going for light vehicles, suggesting they are entirely focused on taking the middle. Taking that middle lane. Seagatter, however... Oh, never mind. Their initial construction is going down to the southwest. They know what's up. Okay, we are seeing people who know how this map works. I am glad to see that. So, this and point, Google Frog immediately going for scalpels. Oh yeah, and also hovercraft in general. Man, we haven't seen that in a while. Not that hovercraft's bad, we just haven't seen it in a while. But yeah, very early scalpel. So just relying on Orphelius to take care of the early raiding and early counter raiding before going in with probably five or six scalpels to just take as much as they can. And Zagero apparently going for the south. I mean. That's what they kind of have to do. Orphelius also going for the south. So Orphelius and Seguero fighting for the real meat of the map, as you mentioned. While Google Frog... Kind of in a position to help take the center. Which... Still useful, but at this point Google Frog is going to need far more skirmishers. Probably... Oh, sorry, scalpels. Probably, I'd say, five or six. That's the typical amount. They might actually just go with four, though. Because I think at four you can yeah. one-shot... I mean, with one, you can one-shot a lot of things. Two is needed to one-shot Scorchers. But even once you get into, like, I guess, level or territory, get four of them, you still one-shot them. Or you have four of them and you just one-shot pairs of Scorchers, and that works too. At this point, it's And we're going to need to see... Um... Google Frog get at least a, about... 12... Middle second economy to be able to support hovers. Hmm. Yeah. Which it seems yeah. like he'll be able to do. That shouldn't be a problem. I mean, the thing is, Orphelius should be able to take the center pretty quick. I mean, Orphelius is basically taking the south, or is on the path to take the southwest. Seguero doesn't seem to be too in a hurry to take the southwest. And Google Frog, pretty strongly in the center. Their commander has the center, and they have... Enough firepower, I'd say, to be able to hold the center well enough. Actually, the darts are a bit of a threat. A bit of a major threat, actually. That's... There's a problem there. Good choice, though. I must say, Black Duchy, very good choice in the darts, because that basically allows all those scalpels to be kited around, and then the darts take off the missiles, and then the Scorchers rush in and actually deal the damage. That's a good strategy. And there are enough Scorchers to deal with Google Frog's commander. And indeed, the darts do take most of the fire. And Seguero's Fleece as well coming in. Not meaningful enough, though. I mean, those Lotuses able to deal with the command, the, the Fleas. If the Scorchers manage to get close enough, of course, it's all over. Google Frog loses the commander, and it becomes far harder to hold that. And Orphelius is a commander under a lot of its fire. Seguero basically trying to deal with them directly. The Venom comes in. One more shot from the Venom. Orphelius' commander is stunned. And, yeah. There it is. Orphelius' commander stunned. Seguero just positioning themselves to deal with this lightning gun from both. So Orphelius losing their commander right off the bat. Seguero once again going straight for those commanders. Like that is Seguero's entire game plan. It worked very well in the last game. And Orphelius losing the ability to easily take the southwest. And Seguero's commander right in the middle. So hey, mexes for days. That'll be the next step most likely. <laughs> Google Frog I'm losing that expansion power in the south right now. Could actually mean the loss of a game. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Google Frog does have the center though, and that is still going to be a challenge. On the other hand, spiders at the south. So hey, who cares about cliffs? Spiders don't care about cliffs. 
Oh, and it's just opened up there. Nice. If Black Duchy takes advantage of this, and they apparently are. I don't know if you noticed, but the flea is coming into the scalpels, taking all the scalpel fire away. And actually, the scalpel's already being peeled away from the front, so that leaves it open. Of course, the Scorchers would have to make a coordinated assault, and that is difficult to work with, but there are enough fleas that the scalpels are losing all their missiles. And it looks like, oh, Black Duchy pointing out to Segero about friendly fire between scalpels as well, but really I think the more important thing is just getting the scalpel on cooldown. And unfortunately, there's now a lot of lotuses right there. So the flea no. and dart tactic may not work as well. Well, the lotuses are a bit of a problem, yes, but they should be dealt with no problem. I mean, the flea and dart is a bit tricky. Flea and scorcher, though, should be enough, and this... Or actually, Lightouchy appears to be positioning to take the north and move along the north side, flank and attack that way. At the same time, Sigero has pretty strongly taken the southwest. I like how Sigero's done this. They've taken the southwest mexes that are not as readily threatened. Especially being that some terraforming coming in here, allowing the scalpels to get in. And this is a good move. This is a really good move from Google Frog. I mean, the one downside, of course, is it opens up the center, which is actually... I retract my previous statement. This is actually a really risky move that I don't think paid off. I mean, it makes sense for why Google Frog would do that, just to really threaten the southwest. And the southwest is super important, but now there is a direct rush path between the northwest and southeast bases, with five or four scorches now coming down here and basically nothing in the way. I mean, Sagato's commander will probably go down. That is the one thing. Although, at the same time, no, it won't. Dart's coming in, finishing off the scalpels, and with that, Scorch is in the main base to get rid of the Hovercraft Factory. The one mace, is that going to be a hero mace? Is that going to save the base? Yes, it is! Yep. Wow. Bad targeting. I think that was actually a targeting algorithm fail rather than a strategy fail from Black Duchy. Because that Hovercraft Factory going down would have been a big blow. Targeting As algorithm it is. fail... Slash the reclaim stuff lying there. Yeah, but I mean, the Scorchers, if they, they could have continued attacking the Hovercraft Factory and just been done with it. Because if that Hovercraft Factory went down, well, then what are you supposed to do? Google Frog has no way of building, and now, I mean, now there's a mace. And there's no Ravagers or basically anything to deal with it. Mostly Ravagers. There are some Wolverines, which I guess helps. And that mace is fairly damaged to begin with, but of course being repaired, and despite Google Frog's assault of the southwest, the southwest remains in Sigero's control. Sigero managed to deflect that expertly, as we mentioned, we saw before with Black Duchies with their darts as well. Very good deflection by the northwest team. At this point, it's basically just Google Frog and their mace. For Google Frog's commander and their mace are the only things holding the center right now. Sigero with the southwest, giving the northwest team a massive economic advantage. And I mean, clearly, Orphelius doing their best to try to deal with the Southwest, take out as much as they can, but they do not have the composition right now. Bandits are the composition. That's what you want to go for. Get the bandits, get rid of the recluses. There are no Venoms in play. Or at least none of the front lines. So that's what you want to see. At least if you're trying to fight that. It's all recluses. The downside, of course, being that it does mean the Thug Outlaw is completely useless, but more importantly, Black Duchy taking that center hard. Very slowly pushing the center. And, of course, with that terraform ramp means that it's easier for Black Duchy to actually protect the Southwest. So Google Frog's terraforming working out very nicely for the Southwest team, surprisingly. Overall, sorry, the Northwest team. Overall, the Northwest team just in a beautiful position. Really, the challenge right now for them is closing out the game. That's the real hard part. But I think a matter of time. It just, it'll just just happen. And I'm pointing out in stream chat that I can apparently rhyme without even knowing. Because that's how I roll. Anyhow... Orphelius continuing to attempt to take this center with the bandits. Not really going to be able to do much, I'm afraid. I think those bandits were basically the last ditch. There was not, there's not much else Orphelius has. They have the racketeer. That's cute. 
The darts are going to completely nullify the existence of the Ragtier if the Wolverines don't. But hey, that's cute. It's a thing that's there. I guess it works. It's a morale boost. At this point, though, Black Duchy just hard pushing that north, that center side. The hard push along the center. Sigaro's pretty much got the southwest, and they, they've got the southwest completely locked down. It's theirs. It belongs to them. And Google Frog throwing in the towel. Orphelius will likely follow suit. Although, I don't know, Orphelius seems to be making a last stand. And that's it. They are out of the tournament if they lose. I mean, unless Orphelius' last stand becomes remarkably, miraculously successful, I don't imagine that they're going to be winning and getting to a game three. This does appear to be the end for the Southeast team, the end of Google Frog and Orphelius' time in this tournament. Which is kind of sad, because I did enjoy watching them, and I am very surprised at what happened, but it seems like they just... I mean, in this case, they just got outrated. Not sure what was going on there. Regardless, Orphelius is making a last stand, and is actually doing a decent job for it, too. I'm actually quite impressed. Five scalpels coming in here to try to break as much of this as possible. Nice use of Halberds, too, to get rid of all the ammo from the defenders. That is very well done. Unfortunately, Wolverine Mines getting rid of the scalpels bit by bit. Only one scalpel remains, and the Halberd going down as well thanks to the Lightning Gun. With the Fleas around the back to flank, that should finish the job. I don't think Orphelius has really anything left. But Orphelius, very desperate to try to stay in this game. Somehow, some way, they want to stay in, and no, unfortunately, they cannot do so. That is the match. And it looks like Google Frog and Orphelius never really had the economy, come to think of it, too. Sheesh. Well, that was that. So, semifinals go to Black Duchy and Sigero. Well done. And Anakin and Hokomoko apparently also won one of their games. How are they doing right now? Are they still playing? Looks like they are indeed. And they're on to a second game. Looks like it's Red Comet, with, which is probably 400 and Zen first choice. Oh, whoops, that was game two. Well, let's go on to the other semifinals. Why not? See what's going on there. So, we saw before that Anakin and Hokomoko, they're basically favorites to win here. And they did already win the first round, so that's not surprising. I mean, really, I just... Yeah, I'm not at all surprised. 